Sajad who's kind of um, broken his head and lost some hair dealing with dealing with this kind of crazy data flows over the past four or five years. He's been uh, with the LP kind of longer than I have, so he's, he's a much better person to talk about that. Um, we'll talk about some of the specifics uh, of the data problems, kind of the really, um, um, you know, problems like that, where something just doesn't quite fit right and you have to sort of like mangle it around to get things to work together. So Sajid will speak a little bit um, about, about our data workflows, the problems that we face, some sort of really subtle issues that you wouldn't kind of think of that, but kind of give us coders sort of like, um, you know, hard times and sleepless nights. Um, and then we'd like to end with just kind of going over what our sort of like proposition is to, um, you know, collectively work on, you know, winning over this problem of messy data that somehow, especially in India, we face a lot of, uh, but, you know, that, there, that there's hopefully light at the end of the tunnel and we won't continue killing ourselves over, like, unicode malformities and, and mismatched column names and stuff like this. So, um, are we... Um, okay, thanks. So, uh, this is the Karnataka Learning Partnership website. It's klp.org.in. Um, the scroll bar is um, And, uh, sorry, they're used to using a Mac. Uh, no, no. Um, so, th these are the partners that we work with uh, the Akshara Foundation, which is our primary kind of host, um, which does a lot of work in schools uh, in Karnataka, uh, New Epa, of course. Uh, Akshay Patra, which does uh, midday meals um, in Karnataka, and a whole bunch of other partners. So this is sort of um, our, you know, on klp.org. Um, we collect data from field workers, um, the NGOs that we work with, field workers on the field, and plus, you know, like we mash it up with stuff like dice data and things. We've got some features like you can compare to schools. This. There's a detailed page for a school where we have some more data from the school. Uh, field workers collect, uh, you know, images of the school. Uh, we've got demographic data um, that, again, we have kind of data that we've collected uh, juxtaposed against the dice data, which you know we're not really sure uh, which one is possibly more reliable. There's infrastructure data. We've got a share your story platform where. Uh, people can contribute kind of data. There's, uh, you know, you can just say share your story, and you're asked to fill in a short questionnaire about the school. Um, and then we aggregate that data. We've also got a share your story platform that works over IDRS, so people can call in um, and uh, feed data that collect uh, that collect this data as, as spreadsheets that we import as well. Uh, we've got a volunteering platform that isn't super active as yet, but the idea being that partner organizations can ask for volunteers for schools, and and people can sign up to volunteer, etc. Um, we generate reports. This is pretty important. We generate reports that are printed as PDFs and uh, given to. So we generate reports at MPMLA constituency levels, at uh, district block cluster, infrastructure, demographics, uh, finance, um, you know, percentage of schools every year, so that you know MPMLAs they can track progress. Uh, the people can question them. Okay, why? Why is the progress kind of bad? The reports are generated in English and Canada. Um, we um, so this is this is the platform. A big shout out to Bebas, who's in, who's in the crowd, who's um, Bebas Devnath, who's uh, work. He works with us extensively on the KRP platform, but the Dice platform was almost single-handedly uh, his work, which is basically taking the Dice data for Karnataka, um, visualizing it on the map. I think we got the geo data from the SSA uh, uh, data set, so it's got. Uh, I'm just going to kind of refresh this page because it's most of my interest. So, you know, it has all the districts. You can drill down to the school level. Um, you can get detailed information on, um, you know, PTR ratio, uh, school listing. You can download reports um, based on the DICE data. This is, I mean, basically using the DICE data and just doing, uh, doing something about it. Um, I think Sajad will talk a little bit about the kind of like subtle problems, but I'll just, you know, shoot on ahead and do a bit of show off. Um, this is the, uh, the SSLC data, which has uh, student marks for um, equivalent of 10th grade or 12th grade? 10th grade, right? Um, and then a district-wise breakup uh, by gender breakup, uh, um, stuff like this. 
And uh, right. And then the other thing that we feel is pretty important to do is uh, make all our data as openly accessible as possible. So almost all our data sets you can download directly off, off the website. And if you're a developer, you can use our API um, to, to query it however you want and use the data however you want. Uh, so this is just our, um, our API documentation um, you know, to get a list of schools, uh, for instance, um, you know, and you can play around with it here. Um, you can get it back as JSON or CSV, uh, depending on uh, which one you'd rather have. Um, okay, so that's, that's for the shiny blingy stuff, and now for the sort of like hard challenges and sort of the, you know, what went behind this and what, it's, it's really a lot less time was spent on building shiny interfaces than it was dealing with the problems of data. And I think that's always sort of interesting to kind of like talk about and figure out solutions to. So I'll, I'll, I'll hand over to Sajad without wasting more time. Then just, I'll, I'll hold it to you. No, no, I'm just going to use this mic so that it's kind of useful for the video. Um, so that's, Sanjay did a good job of, you know, going through everything that we have. Uh, but we kind of have an outline of things that we wanted to cover. So that's the first part was, you know, out about everything about the platform. And then I wanted to show a couple of, you know, problems that we faced, uh, only like very few problems that we faced, right? There's, this is from like a larger array of problems that we've been breaking our heads across like over like two years or two and a half years. Uh, so for instance, if we start with DICE, uh, the DICE code is essentially a huge problem. Uh, I understand the scale and it's actually important to collect this data. Uh, since the schools change like blocks or clusters, the code change. So I don't know if you guys know how the DICE code is broken up, right? So if you look at, so this is how the DICE code, it's 11 digit code, and then the first two digits are for the state, and then district and the block, village, and the school sequence. So when the, when the school moves, from one block to the other, the dice code will change, right? So there's no way to track this particular school across years. And we are losing a major opportunity to actually kind of map the progress of the school across years, right? So we lose the time series value. Now it is available. Awesome. We're really quick to hear about that, and we want to make that available from the APIs also. Um, so we kind of spent a lot of time breaking our heads to figure out why this is happening. Most of this was completely undocumented, right? Like the frequently asked question only had this bit, like how was this, how is this dice code being generated? Um, so we spent a lot of time figuring out why the dice code changed. So like blocks change, cluster change. Um, and also the other problem that we face is that uh, the boundaries. So you know, you know the block cluster school. So districts, blocks, cluster, and then you go to the school, right? So blocks, clusters, these are all educational districts, right? They're sort of these virtual boundaries that we've created to deal with the school's education system. But people don't relate to educational districts as much as they relate to political districts. So when you actually talk about data analysis and actually telling stories through these data sets, it's important to show them on the political district level, right? So then people can understand, oh yeah, Bangalore rural or Bangalore urban or Bangalore as a district or so stuff like that. And so we had severe issues like that. So there have been 27 political districts in Karnataka. I think this is from last year. Um, and, but there are 37 educational districts in Karnataka. And this kind of throws off us on a major tangent to deal with this data because you know, now you have to aggregate these 37 educational districts down to 27 political districts. Right? So we do a lot of spatial analysis to figure out, OK, these two educational districts fall in this political district, so you got to add up all the values for those two districts. So it's kind of complicated. Uh, we worked on a lot of that stuff. And then going beyond like blocks and clusters, people generally don't relate to blocks and clusters. So how do you show them? You can't just show them as a point because that just kind of, kind of loses the, the, the idea. Uh, you can make them searchable, so that's what we've done on, our, on all, the, all the platforms that we have. You can search for a block or a cluster, but the problem is people generally don't know what a block is or what the block name is or what the cluster name is. They generally just know the school name. So that's been one problem. Uh, data formats being across the board has been a major problem with all the data sets that we work with. Right? Um, 
So this is something that we wanted to highlight towards the end of the talk is also like, we try to stick to open standards as much as we can. We work with open source, open data, and all sorts of open tools. And it's really important to do that because when you start sharing these data sets, you can't expect everyone to have an Oracle database. You can't expect everyone to have you know, an expert in Oracle database management, right? Um, so for instance, DICE was in XLS was still much better, uh, but there were like merged columns, which was a nightmare. So you can't parse those XLS without cleaning them up. And these XLS, they're like really large volumes, so we had to like sit down and clean them up, right? So you just like get everyone together over a weekend and then get this going. Um, column names changing. Uh, I have no idea how this happens, uh, but we, we try to think about some of these issues and why they happen, uh, but some of these issues, we have no idea why they occur, right? So this is 11, 12 dice data and 12, 13 dice data and the difference in column names, right? <coughs> so like medium of instruction is now called M-E-D-I-N-S-T-R-S-T-R-1. And it's, it kind of like throws away all the systems that were built to look into this data set when we get the new data set the next year. And it's, it's a huge problem. And it's OK if you have a mapping from how this has changed, or at least this is documented. Right? If you have a list of like these columns and why they are called this way, that's awesome. That's all we need. So that, that was one major issue. Uh, going back, uh, there are a lot of undocumented values. So I'm going to show, so the first bit, this image over here, is from the DCF, the data capture uh, format, uh, the dice form. So if you look at this, right, it, should, it tells you whether a school has a library facility or no. So yes is one and no is two. But if you actually look at the database, the actual XLS we imported into a database, there are three values. So I don't really know what to do with the number nine over here. And there are like several schools, several schools with number nine. No response. No response. Yeah, so the thing, so that's what we want to emphasize again. If you are collecting data within your organization, you should have consulted us. <laughs> you have downloaded data, you requested us, we have provided data. If you have faced the problem, you should have uh, come back to us. I'll be very honest, sir. We have tried to write to you, even. You can access it through just dial. <laughs> 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 we will. So, I mean, I'll be honest with you, like, our relationship with one no, of the guys. We have a problem. We have, yeah, um, it. It's unfortunate that Gautam John, who kind of heads this project, couldn't make it, but we've been trying to get in conversations with Mueva and the This is Karnataka data, no? Yeah. You should have contacted Mr. Uh, Nagesh or. Uh, we've, we've spoken to Nagesh, we've, we've written emails. I don't want to get into this. Oh, no, we are not. Uh, but, but but I'm just I'm just telling you these issues. We are uh, real issue. and you in, are in general, you know, like if you if your organization is collecting data and you expect other people to use it, documentation is very very important. You can't expect people to like weave through your data set, figure out what's number nine. Or, I'll show you what happened with SSLC, right? I <laughs> this is insane. Yes. That's exactly why all the three of us came in here. Yeah, so requesting you to tell us how to go become a software person. <laughs> it's, it's, I mean, I'm not going to tell you how to become a software person. Is an education person. Yeah. All right. So we we sort of we learned Word, we learned PowerPoint, and perhaps migrated to a few other things. Yeah. I, it wouldn't have been even struck me as wrong that I changed the field names. Right. All right. So that's exactly where you need to intervene. Yeah. I I agree. So, I agree completely that we have led ourselves into a mess and please help us unmess. Yeah. So this is also the reason why we wanted to do Open Data Cabinet around education. Bring these people into the same room and talk about some of these issues. <laughs> you, and you didn't find the details in the nice description of this. No, so the number nine was not. No, number nine, okay. A lot of these things are not. I, okay. I just wanted to bring this up. Ah, so there are no, also, no, just like there are. I'm not challenging what you have said. Yeah, yeah. So there were a lot of these things, but missing pieces. We try to get in touch. We try to improve. Thank you. Um, and then SSLC again, the same problem with boundaries, uh, data formats. We got a bunch of Microsoft Access databases uh, files. Uh, spent some time cleaning them up. Uh, absolutely no metadata. It took me a week's time to figure out 16s star 52 is 
means that the students scored 52 in Sanskrit. Um, and 31 and 35 means 35, the students scored 35 in English. And 83 E triple, so I went by the pattern, right? So the last two digits would be the score. And then triple A threw me off because the score should be on 100, right? And then I get on the phone with this guy at SSA and he's like, well, I think it's science, but the kid might not have showed up for the exam. So, okay, so he's absent. So none of these, I mean, it's okay to do this. People generally get into, you know, picking numbers or patterns which are outliers, so you can show that, okay, this is absent, right? It's fine, it's totally, it's totally reasonable to do that. But the point is you have to write this down. Um, interoperability. Uh, so there are a lot of organizations collecting data about schools and students across the country, but, there's no way to conflate these data sets because there's no common factor or a unique identifier across these data sets. And it's okay, it's, it's totally fine, but we have to start thinking about these issues, right? We know that the dice code is an actual like, thing that works, right? Even though it works only for a year, but now we have the mapping, so that's great. So what if we all try and you know push for dice code to become like a standard where every other organization who's collecting different kinds of data, right, different sets of data, why don't we use dice codes across data sets? So then we can all just conflate these data sets together. There, but, are, there are problems with the dice code also. Yeah, so, but that's fine. If there's, so, a, if there's a mapping. And, uh, and the request is that it should be retrofitted with the census code. Yeah. So we have already started retrofitting uh, with the census code. Some half, half of the states have already been retrofitted. So very soon you will see, along with the dice code, the census code. So yeah, so a lot of these things uh, we have to start thinking about. Uh, I'm I'm really excited about you know to share these problems with you because you know Sanjay Bivas and I, and with, along with like six other people, have been breaking our heads looking through these data sets and also trying to get in touch with people who have been working on these things. Um, and then, yeah, that, that kind of, I just wanted to show some of the problems we're, we've dealt with. But this is only the gist of things. This is the scale of, since the scale of data set is across the country, the problems are also really, really huge. But we should just start thinking about these problems, you know, talk to each other, figure out how to solve these problems. Um, I, don't, I don't want to get into any arguments here. That's, that's the only thing I want to show. Yeah, thanks. Uh, so I, I think that the one thing that we wanted to talk about a little bit is, I mean, uh, something that I think we believe pretty strongly in. I think there will always be messy data. There will always be software projects that fail. There will always be, you know, there will always be these challenges. But what can, so the one principle that we try and adhere to in everything that we do is develop in the open. And we think this is really, really, really important. Everything we do, all our mistakes, all our successes, um, you know, you can, you, you can see a commit log of, of all the software we've developed. You can kind of, if you really want to get into it, you can see why certain changes were made. Um, you know, we always have to put in ugly hacks in our software. Um, at some point or the other, you have to do that. Um, but, you know, it will be documented somewhere. There will be a GitHub issue. Uh, there will be a ticket for it. Um, that you know, there will be a history of you know code changes, etc. And sort of, we have a strong belief that this is kind of the best way to overcome the challenges that we collectively face is to kind of do whatever we are doing in the open. And and the most important thing there is to not be afraid to fail in the open. This is what this is at the end of the day. That's the biggest fear that if we. You know, if we develop in the open, people will see how stupid we are. It's okay. We're all stupid. Um, and I mean, honestly, like, you know, software developers are the stupidest people on the planet, like, really. Um, and, and that's okay. Um, but it's really important to, um, you know, to be, to be open about that and to, you know, to develop in the open. And that, you know, so I think, uh, Sajid, you want to just run through you yeah, know, so our, our wiki and our processes and, you know, just to give a sense. And I, I don't really advocate using GitHub, but it's just sort of an idea of being open about it. So, yeah, we're not trying to, 
you know, push these kind of processes to anyone. I just want to be very clear. Uh, this is one way of doing it, and this is kind of worked for us. Uh, Karnataka Learning Partnership has been around for like five to six years. I worked with KLB for two and a half years, and over like the last three years, we've learned and relearned and unlearned a lot of these things. And I found these things very valuable, and I'm going to take these like the things that I've learned and with everyone else forward also. And one of the things, like like Sandy said, we we moved all our stuff from our closed servers to like GitHub and like manage teams. You know, uh, we we don't sit in the same office. We all are around the country. Vivas is in Calcutta. Sandy is in Bombay. I'm in Bangalore. Uh, but we don't necessarily go to the office. We don't meet very often. So we just like work all, all the, so if you want to take a look at any of the code bases that we've been talking about, all the dashboards, all the, all the data, all the scripts that cleans up this, the data sets, uh, it's all out in the open. So we generally have a nice mechanism where you, okay, so if there's a problem, if the data needs to be cleaned up, or if you want to procure more data, you just generally post to get up to get, right? And then you talk about it, and then you figure out how, what's the best way. Um, so yeah, it could be like documentation, like maybe just edit the example in the code to clarify the format. So these things are really important, at least when you expect other people to use it and also like latch onto your services. So we have a very open, flat GitHub structure. All the API, all the code that we write are very well documented. Um, not much of the JavaScript, but... No, no, it has comments now. Okay. <laughs> um, so yeah, everything you you find, and then we kind of try to do these things really small, because I know we all want to solve problems on a very large scale, right? But you have to, at some point, you have to like take a step back and understand the resource limitations that your organization has, funding-wise, you know, human resource-wise, infrastructure-wise. So we spend a lot of time thinking about what's possible. And we do it very small. So we first, like, when I joined two and a half years ago, we first took the SSLC data. And now that's a thing that we do every year. And it doesn't take much effort, right? When you get the new data, we just update the data. And then we started, we, Devas and I worked on the DICE dashboard. So we did that. And then Sanjay came on board, and then we redid most of the infrastructure, where you see the new map and the school page, the compare features, and everything. So it's very important to go incremental. And if you just like want to do everything together, that's just not going to work. If you have the resources, if you have like 100 people who are really well coordinated and are like rock star software developers, maybe. But it is still going to be a huge challenge, right? So we do like one by one, kind of lay out the problems really well. Um, and I want to also like, it's great that we saw a lot of stuff that people are building with all these data sets. Uh, I'm really glad that like, parts could show us on these stuff. Uh, but I want to highlight using open standards uh, because our, a lot of stuff, so when I was standing there, I was kind of looking the school G, school GIS.nic.it. It's flash and I couldn't see it on my phone. I went back to my laptop. So there's also this whole idea of like intuitiveness, right? If you want people to use the stuff that you build, you want to make it really easy for them to use. You know, convenience trumps everything. Right? So we are, like all the stuff that we build, I'm not saying that all of this is perfect, but we try to put in a lot of effort in terms of the design direction also. We try to make it really easy. We try to make it work on all the platforms we can. And so that's also very important, you know. Building something on Flash is not very exciting because it's not going to work down the line. Um, so open standards, kind of building the open, um, and then collaboration. So we write all these things, and then we send it across to people who are doing the same things. We try to collaborate. Uh, and it's important to have all these things written down so it's easy to you know, talk to them. Um, yeah, you want to do that? Yeah, questions? Questions? Uh, Zab, can you give us a bit of the policy? And is it for us to prune and, and yeah. get it out to you guys to do the same for any other stage? So we, we've had we've had uh, question, we've had people reach out from other states to you know deploy this. The thing is, we we have limited capacity. We're only like seven people right now, right? And we can't. Just, I'm not even part of the team. Right? My question was rather like 
for example, I would like a, a group from my state. Absolutely. Uh, we clone your repository and um, uh, we have a like, discussion. Uh, absolutely. Uh, absolutely. absolutely. Just a warning that it's not, I mean, to be honest, it's built with the data we had. If, you know, I think trying to build a generalized system straight off the bat, I mean, my experience with it is you'll end up not solving the generalized use case or the specific use case. And we kind of clearly focused on solving our specific use case, which is dealing with the intricacies of the data that we are getting. So I would love it to be easily plug and play for another state and another context. It's probably not, although if you find chunks of our code useful, we'd be more than happy to, to try and help you out. Just a warning that it's not, it's not really built to be like plug and play, change the state, change some variables and get going. We'd love to do that, but we've got too many problems to deal with with the specificities of our data that we'd like to sort out before building a generalized platform. These are the roadmap. Yeah, so. Yeah, kind of, you know, iterate. We try to make, so keep everything if as clear someone, as possible. If so. someone wants to, we're super happy to, to try and work with you, but yeah. It's github.com slash klp. D O T O R G dot org. GitHub. GitHub. G I T H U B. Uh, but if you, if you go to our website, KLP dot KLP dot org dot in, uh, you find you find it in there. Uh, yeah, in, under the about 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 data data code. Yeah. Uh, you are still using uh, twelve thirteen data. Yeah. So this, now 14, 15 11. Yeah, so, so the DICE website has the latest data, which yeah. is 13, 14. Uh, our um, data which should be up kind of like next week, but basically our big problem is... Nice. If 14, 15 will be available next week, but 13, 14 is available for the 13, next 14 one 14 on the DICE website is there. But yeah, on the yeah. KLP website... Yeah, KLP is 12, 13. Exactly, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly, That's exactly. The, exactly. The, that, the, that is something that, this is something we are... Um, it's the process of conflation is really the big problem of matching uh, the KLP schools to the DICE schools and then uh, hopefully this will be a solved problem now but when the DICE IDs change we would have to kind of redo this process every year uh, which has been and we've, we've basically been cleaning up our data import process which was very ad hoc and so this is something we know and this is something we were hoping to have three months ago but it's just it's, it's been a cleaning time for our processes, and now when we import fresh data, we'll be better at importing fresh data immediately. Yeah. Uh, yeah. On the data cleaning part, like you said, that was a major part of the. Did you try anything like Google Refine or any open Right, so, we, so that, we, that was the one thing we didn't show. Yeah, so we, we, yeah. we've been experimenting with a lot of things, uh, starting with uh, you know homegrown Python scripts to like you know open refine. So we have this public instance of open refine. Uh, you got, you're welcome to use it. Uh, so we kind of like, Vibha set this up at some point a couple of months ago, and we've been playing with all these things. Uh, but also the scale is huge, right? You're dealing with massive ones of data, which your browser can't deal with. So, just a couple of tech questions. One would you mentioned you wrote Sanjay? Sanjay, yeah. Sanjay. So uh, is that, why don't you advocate using GitHub? Oh, no, I, I mean, I wasn't, I wasn't saying you have to use GitHub, but just that be, be in the open, it doesn't mean using GitHub necessarily. Does the travel in a room full of demo? Does the travel seem to stay in a room full of demo? Don't necessarily use GitHub? Yes. Uh, where are our process for that? Let's have that conversation. The other thing is, so I also have a small team, but I tried, uh, so I was looking for opportunities to volunteer, and then I, I think it was a couple of months ago, and I tried to sign up, and it Sent me email. You are confirmed for volunteering at some event in the past. So then you should like. I think it's not really up to date. So the volunteering thing. The problem is, it's not. Oh, interesting. This. Hey, can you? The, it's awesome. Can you send us? Can you forward that email to us? And then yeah, we'll take it yeah, up. yeah. I look at the, the the problem is the volunteering thing. We kind of like put it up in a hurry, and then it wasn't really being used so much. Like they weren't putting up volunteer activity, so it's entirely possible you ran into a problem. The, the tidy data also right, like a couple of years ago. So it looks like it's not being actively updated. The, the main website, like, you know, we're working really hard right now updating it. So this, uh, if we get the 14, 15 data next week, I'll up and make it up in online like in one week. But the KLP website, we're basically, we've been going through a major process of rewrite, so we've rewritten all our tools over the past six months, and then the data import process was really, really messy, because we're kind of getting data from all these different sources, and 
you know, in these three years that we didn't import data, there was all sorts of hacks in place where some data would be imported. So the past three or four months has been this process of sort of just cleaning up our data import processes. I was really hoping to have this done because I knew this would be the number one criticism at the camp. But unfortunately, we are probably still another couple of weeks away. No, but I mean, this great job on GitHub. I think the fact that you are on GitHub means now if I want to contribute, I don't need to start from scratch. I think we're on top of uh, I've seen this, uh, like the political, <coughs> you are mapped it to the political thing and the MLA name is there and all what is responsible. So how do you actually see, uh, so these reports are being seen by them and how is it actually, is the feedback loop going on? Yeah, so we, we have people working. The impact basically. How yeah, so we send out these reports every quarter. Or so yeah, like not. three, every three months we generate these reports in Canada. And then we send this out to the MPs, our MLA's office, right? Uh, I don't know much about who's following up with that, but we've heard great things about that process. Uh, we've had like toilets being built, you know, toilet infrastructure being taken care of, and we've heard good feedback. Uh, but this is, is only is like bang. Is there anywhere uh, probably you track that progress or something? I don't you, know. I don't know what we're doing on that. I'm so that's not. That would actually show sure more of. Uh, yeah, definitely. Useful. I mean, it would be a pushing this share your story platform thing where. People, you know, call in and this and that, which they answer some questions like, does the school have a toilet, etc. So indirectly, it's being tracked that six months ago it didn't, and now it does, but not directly. That oh no, he got the report and made a change. We don't. Maybe you can use something like I change my city or something to track the progress. Yeah, um, we we haven't thought about the feedback much because. You know, like so far the last couple of years we've been just like bootstrapping and setting this whole stuff up. And, um, interesting. Okay, we're gonna. Oh, one okay. I'm just trying to figure out for myself why are you doing this? That's a second, I'm not interested. Uh, so I was wondering if, if it was an activist reaction to the status of education, then perhaps you would like to remain outside there. But if you believe that. It has to start, you know, feeding back into the schools, feeding back into the functionaries that exist in the ground. Then I, I see a very good opportunity of NROER's groups actually benefiting from this kind of an interface. Therefore, what is it that I need to do? What are those two steps that I need to walk before I come to Good. I'm so glad that you asked that question, but. And we're going to walk more than those two steps asking that question. So we can shake our hands right away. Uh, and we're going to make it really easy for us to shake hands with you uh, as well. Um, question about why we're we doing this. Uh, so there's a larger organization behind all this, right? The Akshara Foundation. It's been around for nine, nine to ten years now. Uh, we've We've only been working on the technology side where we, you know, take all the data sets, possible data sets, you know, think about how we can do this. But Akshara has been doing a lot of other stuff. Uh, essentially, we do library programs in a lot of government schools. Uh, we, we do, you know, specific extracurricular, kind of part of curriculum programs, like you, you have a math program, you have a language program, where we train teachers and, you know, these are only specific schools. We can't do all schools in Karanaka because we don't have the capacity to do that right now. Um, but generally, we want to make sure that you know government schools are not left out out, out of the out of the mainstream channels, and uh, we want to make sure that what we, we can do what we can. Uh, and there's a I'm not going to talk about a lot of the philosophy because I might not be correct in, in a lot of those fronts. But I'm happy to like put you in touch with the people who started this mission. Uh, and I'd be like happy to, you know, Sanjay and I and Devas would be totally happy to talk about some of these data intricacies and how we can take this forward. Uh, 